Hey, what's up guys? It's Max. I'm here in Dubai at the Emar office, the number one real estate developer in Dubai. And I think the number two in the entire world, as far as size, these guys are doing some amazing things. And I'm going to go see some very luxury projects in Dubai Hills. And I'm also going to go see some affordable projects in Dubai Hills, but you can spend a day with me and my wife as I explore Dubai and look at the real estate they have available for us. Awesome place to live if you haven't figured that out already, but come with me and spend the day. When, when we were younger, there's a game called The Sims on the computer, right? I feel like that is what you live in here. Like everything was made. <laughs> I'm 37. I'm 37. Shots it's a fired. Sim. Shots fired. I'm, 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 <laughs> what? Well, you never played Sims. Come on, you probably bro. played outside. You played you know outside when you were a kid. Though. Yeah. It's like it's like a game where you can build whatever you want. You build a like city. You create a city, whatever you want. It's just like a. Yes. yes. Oh, now you know. Now you know. Oh my now you know. God. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like that's what you know. Because in Sims, you spend so much time. You come home after school, and you're like, "Oh, I'm gonna put the building here. It's gonna do this." I feel like that's what this was made very on purpose. It was it just had so much intention. I'm I'm very uh, bearish on that. I'm not bullish on the metaverse yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. The, 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 the theory that we have. Is something as well? No, no. Okay. <laughs> the theory that I have is the, re the reason why real estate is valuable is because you and I say it is. There's one of those buildings. There's one of that piece of land that it can sit on. But there's 60 different worlds in the metaverse. And I think they're growing even more, right? So if there's 60 Bush Khalifas, then what's the value of one? Correct. Right. And so you got to think who is going to who has invested so much time and money into creating going to create the real metaverse. And it's a company that changed their name to Meta Facebook. Everybody has a Facebook profile, whether you use it or not, is up to you. So then they're going to become the central place where there's one New York City, there's one Dubai. And that's where you buy, because everybody's going to agree that this is the real meta of the world. Everything else is going to fall to the wayside. So I see people spending three hundred thousand dollars on some virtual land. It's a bet. It's a risk you can take, but there, you got to wait. You got to look at the whole ecosystem and be like, there's one company. Look, a, a big company like Facebook, one of the biggest companies in the world, changed their name. So you got to think where their vision is and how long have they been thinking of this vision? I'm, I'm excited to see and learn today. It's, you know, in the States, I, I do real estate. Started here, working my way up. Obviously, I don't build stuff like this yet, but I'm inspired by the architect here and the, the, the purpose and the intent that comes behind it. The details, like we were sitting, yeah, we sit and have a dinner and the trees are sparkling in sync, right? And that takes so much thought because that's such a detail that gets left behind when you come to building, but it, it's part of the overall experience. You have to think from A to Z when you're building something like this, you gotta have an amazing team. So I'm excited to just see some of the projects. I'm excited to see some of the good stuff. Excited to see some things that land in the middle for everyday people and uh, just explore. And I'm just here to make sure he shops. I'm just here to make sure you buy. <laughs> Every time we go shopping, I miss, I lose my credit card. Oh my goodness! Right? <laughs> so maybe, yeah, you know. <laughs> we're in the gold market. I lost Five it four times. times in one day. What's an average time of uh, of unit on market to? Again, uh, as a market, it's not as evolved as the Western market. Mm -hmm. So our research is not very accurate. But I'll I'll give you my two cents on it. Mm -hmm. Dubai has a population of about three million, okay. which grows four percent annually. So one hundred and twenty thousand people grow each year. Okay, they require at least between forty and sixty thousand units. Mm -hmm. So as long as we are between forty and sixty thousand units, you're meeting demand. We are meeting demand. But there's also another problem. The moment we fall short of demand, rents start going high. That means cost of hiring becomes really high. Mm -hmm. So hiring reduces. When there is more supply, the rentals reduce. Correct. And then more people are able to afford the city. So it's never in an, we are not in an oversupply zone. Geographically, Dubai is located seven hours flight distance from about 70% of world population. That's what they said, two thirds how, of the how, world. Yeah, how, 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 we can never be oversupplied. Yeah. So what happens? Yeah, I wouldn't think, think I would, what I would think is undersupplied, right? That, that would, because what happens when the marketing works and people start to realize, right? Because it's, it's going to be a point there's the, that the marketing starts to work and people realize, wait, Dubai is safe. It's affordable. It's fun. It's a quality of life. And then you got to produce yeah. double the amount of units. That, that's what we're doing. Actually, last year was MR, for us, it was one of the record years in the history of MR sales. Mm -hmm. The market improved in Dubai about 180%. We grew about 500 to 600% in our sales. 
So we did phenomenally well. As we speak, we do not have stock. So exactly. if you ask me, I'm at a shortage. You're selling for the future. Uh, I'm yeah. at a shortage. We are launching, we are going to launch anywhere between 21 to 27 projects this year. So when it comes to people coming from the outside, where is the number one place in the world you're seeing people buying from the outside, if you can say? That's actually a very interesting question. The market in Dubai was about 60 to 70% market was dependent on six countries, which was India, Pakistan, China, Qatar, Saudi, and of course, Emiratis were always number one. Mm -hmm. So six countries were contributing majorly to the market share. And now the top 30 nationalities together contribute less than 60-70% of the market share. That means market has fragmented. Mm -hmm. Now I have buyers from France, I have Germany, I have Russia, I have Italian buyers. So now, in fact, my, my problem has become manpower. I don't have an Italian speaking salesperson. I don't have a Dutch speaking salesperson. And we have buyers from everywhere. Indians still remain, uh, this, last year Indians, Saudi, Indians, Emiratis remained uh, and Pakistanis remain pretty close to each other. But the market share was not exceeding 10% in each category. Okay. But again, Indians is a very relatively loose term. Indians are everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it can be an American Indian or a British Indian or yeah, American yeah. Pakistani. So still, yes, Emiratis are among, they, they trust us, they trust the city more, they're investing more in it. But buyers are everywhere. It's, it's our reach which is stopping us from selling more. Yeah. We should have had the bandwidth right now to have a campaign over 70 countries, have offices, seminars, to tell people how good the life here is. So what happens, and that's what I'm saying, there's eventually that message will hit, yeah. you know, the United States and these other places, especially because the business owners. Like me as an entrepreneur myself, I'm looking at the quality of life. I'm looking what I'm paying for versus what I'm getting in America. And then I look at the business side of things, right? For me, it's a business decision. How much taxes am I paying? How much, what, what, what comes with the money that I'm required to spend? And then you look at the quality of life here and you say, wait, so what, do, what is your plans? What is your prediction, I should say? So my I, I'm very bullish on the buy market, at least because one, it's at a very high up sentiment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So sentiment doesn't have an on off switch. Mm -hmm. Sentiment goes through its entire cycle and then with each trigger goes further up or further down. Mm -hmm. So I'm bullish. I think for the next two years we are under supply. We will be producing less than what will be consumed. It's Monday morning. Look at the office. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to have really good next two years. Yeah, I, I, I foresee that too. Just, you know, I took some time while I was here. I jumped in a car and I started just driving around it's a couple hours and I just started looking at things. And I started seeing how they're connecting different parts of the city and the different regions and here and here and here. And so I really think that, and a part of the reason why I'm even making a video is because there's a misconception of Dubai and the Middle East in general. And part of me is that I've always, when I experience something that I like, I like to share with my audience and being able to share this experience with them, especially a lot of my entrepreneur friends and say, listen, I, knew, I know what you like, and this is more, here is more of what you like than what you think. And it's also very conducive to business too. You can come here and have a business and be successful and not spend so much of your revenue. You have to give it back to the government or with taxes. That's a big thing. We know as business owners, our number one thing that we ever are gonna spend money on is taxes. True. And so we wanna, as a business owner, we like to spend more of that in the people, in the, in the people. into the people and into the business because we wanna invest more into the people so we can grow the business. That's how you grow your business. See, the quality of life that you were talking about is so good in Dubai. In, an entry level professional who's making, let's say three or $4,000 mm -hmm. can never even dream of living next to Central Park or- in, not, not even yeah, close, in the Upper East unless they live in a closet. Yeah, and they in a tiny house probably, if they miss their uh, uh, train, like the metro, they're going to wait another 30 minutes and be late to work. Correct. Versus here, even that entry level professional can afford to live in the peripheral of downtown by sharing the apartment with somebody. Yeah. Dubai enables everybody to get those, like the dreams which you have for a girl, maybe it is a first Gucci bag or an LV bag or it's an apartment which is walking distance from Dubai Mall or Burj Khalifa. Dubai is still affordable enough for that. So one thing I talk about New York, I'm from New York, I was born in New York. The thing that I talk about is you can see success in New York, yeah. but it's very, it's not obtainable for a lot of people. So you talk about a good point there. Question though, just to kind of wrap this part to the end, I'll let you show me this stuff is, when you say an affordable unit, right? Um, what's a, what's a mid-range affordable rental? I know you guys do a lot of sales, but what's a, what's a rental market here, affordability? So if, if I would have to say, let, let's say an average one bedroom, mm -hmm. an average one bedroom rental in all, 
I don't know, do you want me to give you all of Dubai? Because all of Dubai. No, just say like you know where the city, because people are comparing city yeah, to city, so right? If if it's in very close to city, it's about 75, 80,000 dirhams. Okay. So which, less than thirty thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah, about, divided by. Yeah, about twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars range. Got it. So you're looking at two to twenty-five hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Uh, is going to get you the top quality of life that in if I had to compare this to anywhere in New York Which you can't compare the two cities at all, but yeah. if you had to compare this is a six to seven thousand dollar a month Yeah way of living So yeah. the team at Imar has taken us uh, to a dining experience. I'm not sure which what restaurant we're doing, but this is inside their famous building that they built called the Bush Khalifa, the world tallest. We're gonna get to experience. Hey, what's up guys? We're at another stop here. We're at the Imar Dubai Hills, which is a residential community that is gonna house over 100,000 people. They got everything from parks, shopping malls, commercial buildings. Come check it out. They've already delivered 7,500 units and we're gonna see more. Come on. Emar, Dubai Hills Estate, scaling there. Look at this. Look at this. This is one community that I'm actually standing in right now, but I'm looking at the model version of it. This side has a golf course, and my house is right here. I am here at one of the models of the collective. This is a concept that was introduced by Imar and it's essentially smaller living. This one is a one bedroom and I see the two bedroom, which seems big, but it's about 410 square feet. But here's the kicker. You're only paying about $200,000 to live like this. But here's the idea. A lot of people know of co-working. This is kind of co-living, meaning that your large spaces, such as your workspace, your big kitchen, the places where you hang out, are shared by other guests. But let's step inside of this 410 square foot piece of beauty. So if you look here, you got your typical, you know, four burner here, inlay, butcher block countertops, small refrigerator. And if you're coming from somewhere like New York, this is more bang for your buck than you could ever. Cause at $200,000 for this, you have your living room area, your kitchen area, and your bedroom area. Now let's move in here. I love these glass doors. Yeah, you need, and look, really only need one TV because your bed is here and it rolls right into this. But I'm sure there's different things you can do. Rolling on here, you got your bedroom, your closet space. Looks like your pantry area, which is actually quite big. It's gonna be pantry and washer and dryer, so it's pretty big. And coming to the full size bathroom has a stand up shower, toilet, obviously, and a one bay sink. Now, this concept they introduce because people started doing a lot of co-working space because they weren't working in the office. And so even though you only have 410 square feet here, you got you know one or two or three or four people can sit here and eat with you, you got a much bigger space that I wanna show you <laughs> is, is the co-living side of things. So essentially what you have is you're gonna share your swimming pool, you're gonna share your office, you have shared Wi-Fi, you have things like that. But then you have this open kitchen here idea that if you wanted to cook bigger things or have more guests, you can do that here. This is called the collective co-work, co-living. I, lo I love the idea. And you get so much more bang for your buck. If you're from a city that has small places like New York, you would know that apartment is already a million dollars. So I love the concept, collective for me more.
So currently, when you look like this, you're like, oh my god, of course it's far. But when we place the bike Hills Estate, now when I'm gonna go back, from this office to office in downtown, it's 12 minutes. Mm. But because when we were going back, we were going a little bit like this. Now we're gonna go directly to downtown. Makes sense. We are conquering the bike. Yeah, yeah. We should. All right, so just a few moments ago, looking at the model, you've been able to see the park from the top down view. But now we're actually standing in the park. This is Dubai Hills Park, which is part of the community. You can go from the mall to your condo, to your home, to your apartment, walking entirely through the park here in Dubai Hills. So this concept by Emar is a full work, live and play community. You can see you have your own park full of grass. The irrigation system here is absolutely insane. But I'm telling you, this is one of a kind. Even though it seems kind of far from downtown, it's only about 12 minutes, which means that you have so much access to downtown, but you live in such a brand new community here. All right, so the entire Dubai Hills project is 2,600 acres. Imar has thought about every single thing you could possibly think about, including adding a 40 acre park. Now think about that from a developer's perspective, you're gonna give up 40 acres of the land that you can use to build something and sell something and just make it a greenery. That means they have a live, work and play community mindset through this entire project. You can start from the mall and walk all the way through the park into your own backyard, into your own condo, into your own apartment using just the greenways that they provided on 40 acres. What a brilliant way to think and a brilliant way to execute a project. Congrats to Imar on this. Hey, what's up guys? So we're still in Dubai Hills, a project by Imar, one of the most fascinating things I've ever went to. You've seen behind me where we at before near the park where you had apartments, condominiums and townhomes. And now we're here at the villas, these homes, these, these separated, these stand free homes. And I am blown away that they've even given me the access to be able to see this, but they made it so easy for somebody from the outside to come to Dubai and buy a property and live so comfortably, I am blown away to show you what we have in store next. Come with me. First of all, something that I wish I was putting on my own property door, but they didn't have it because of COVID, is these pendulum doors here that you can see is, they're huge. I mean, the, the attention to detail, here's one thing that I know Dubai does very well. They build quickly and with quality, and Emar is like the top of the list when it comes to that. They do it fast and they do it well. So come check this out. So impressed. If I'm not mistaken, this thing has six or seven bedrooms, but wait, what's necessary that always comes, this is also has a maid quarters, has her own entrance, has two kitchens, a show kitchen and a wet kitchen, also has a room upstairs for the nanny, and it has a guest room downstairs. So a total of almost nine to 10 bedrooms in this place. But what's even crazier is the view. But check it out. Open floor, if you ever heard of open floor concept, this is the ultimate open floor concept. I feel like I'm in a $15 million home in Miami, but this thing, the attention to detail is absolutely insane. Follow me, let me show you the wet kitchen. And essentially, for most people in America, they don't understand the concept, right? Because it was like real foreign, foreign to me until I really did it. This is a show kitchen. This is where you put your food at. This is where you have your guests in your kitchen. And then you have a kitchen where the food is actually cooked and they call that the wet kitchen. So let's go back here. All right, so this wet kitchen is actually where the food gets cooked, prepared, and then served outside. But here's the interesting thing about this. In this wet kitchen also connects to the maid quarters, 
the, the maid, they have their own bedroom, their own bathroom. They have their own separate interests that leads to outside. Let me see if I can show you. Right outside, they come into a different door of the house. So your maid has their own entrance, their own house, their own flat, whatever you wanna call it, it's just amazing. But let me show you the rest of the house. Quality was not spared on this project at all. You're talking 2,600 acres, and this is one of the communities here. Did I mention that this is on a golf course? If you check that out behind here, I don't know what hole it is on the golf course, but it's absolutely amazing. You have a huge entertainment party slash family get together deck out, out back. And it is, it's just absolutely amazing, but I'm not done, come on. Not only can you hang out with your family here, you also have a fire pit. You have your own fire pit here. So you step down and you have your own fire pit that's overlooking the golf course. This is absolutely amazing. All right, cool. Let me show you a little bit more of downstairs. They have a guest room here and then we'll head upstairs. So here is the guest portion of the house. This is a guest room. Now what's real cool about this guest room is that it has its own entrance and exit to the exterior. So that if your cousin, your brother, or whoever is staying here, they don't have to enter into the main room. Another cool factor about this is you can turn this into an office. It's downstairs on the main level and you can use this as your own office, office at home. All right, so now let's go upstairs where the rest of the family is going to live. So upstairs on the second floor, there are a total of six bedrooms. Let me take you inside one of them. So all the bedrooms on the back of the house have an amazing view of the golf course and the landscaping of the Bush Khalifa and the rest of downtown Dubai. It's amazing to be able to see here, you got people playing golf, you got a beautiful view of the city. It's absolutely amazing. Here's the cool thing, there's six bedrooms up here, including a master bedroom and also a nanny bedroom, which is not included in the six. So there's actually seven bedrooms and a small wet bar upstairs. This is the master bedroom, including a large master bath with a tub, shower, and its own toilet room. It's probably one of the most amazing views in this house from the second story, seeing the entire downtown of Dubai. It's amazing, there's so many rooms, so much square footage in this house, and the project and the community is so cool. So not only do you get to have an amazing house with the entertainment backyard, you're also getting a community with a park, 40 acre park, that is huge, right here, only 15 minutes from downtown. Whether you're from America, the UK, Africa, anywhere in the world, and you wanna buy real estate somewhere else other than where you live, Emar has made it absolutely easy. These villas here are absolutely insane, luxury, they spared nothing, and it's still what I consider affordable when it comes to luxury. You have the golf course, you have a very safe community, you have a mall, you have a 40 acre park, all within the same neighborhood and some beautiful residents. Imar knows what they're doing. You need to get on board because this is an absolute insane project. I love what I've seen here. You need to come check it out, pull the trigger, do what you need to do, make it happen.